as we get this. So welcome to the party, guys. This is the beginning of this session. Today, I've got a very special guest for you by the name of Dan Fleshman. He's the youngest founder of a publicly traded company. He's an investor in 36 companies right now. How does this guy do it? We're going to learn how he's been able to create this massive influence because not only is he helping create businesses and entrepreneurs, charity, the Model Citizen Fund, he's eradicating homelessness back at a time. He's going to share with us a little bit of how he's doing that. So this is a man who truly embodies the idea of serving your way to success. And he's been able to do it in a massive scale. So some of you think it's not possible to build your own dream and build your passion. It's not possible to help others become financially successful and still do that yourself as well. This is a man who's doing it. And I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of his story. He's going to come in and share some insights, answer some questions that you guys have. And at the same time, if you guys notice here on this top area right here, you see a tab called Q&A. Go in here and ask those questions. Dan Fleshman, welcome going? to the party, bro. Oh man, too blessed to be stressed over okay. here. <laughs> man, so exciting to have you, man. I'm so happy to have you here. You're one of our, our best contributors. I mean, every time I've asked you to come out and serve our audience, you've always said yes, you've always showed up. And that's one of the biggest qualities that I love about you is that you're not for an opportunity looking to serve first. And that's, I think, a big thing that entrepreneurs can understand. So maybe did I miss anything that we got to highlight? You got your model citizen fund, you're you know, publicly traded, youngest founder, you've got 36 companies you're investing in right now. I mean, you're doing all kinds of stuff. You're even launching your own educational system. This is, I mean, you've got your hands on a lot of cookie jars yeah. right now. I mean, my, my main day job is my social media agency. Uh, we spend around $60 million mm -hmm. with influencers for brands, products, and mobile apps. So that's my main focus is the social media agency. Oh. And then my passion, obviously, is the charity Model Citizen Fund. Awesome. So let's start with the Model Citizen Fund. Tell me a little bit about that. What is the purpose? So this is our eighth year, and we make backpacks for the homeless with 150 emergency supply items inside. But I, it's a 0% charity, meaning I cover all overhead, all staff, all shipping, all marketing, everything to do with the overhead I cover. And effectively, we're able to give out backpacks to homeless shelters, women abuse shelters, uh, teen, teen shelters, and orphanages. And then we also give it out on the streets. So we'll actually go out there with, with each other and walk down the street. <laughs> uh, and we do that in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, San Diego, Orange County ourselves. And then we ship to... St. Louis, Texas, Chicago, New York, Florida. And we also sent to orphanages in Tijuana, El Salvador, and other countries. What inspired you to do this? So I kept raising six figures at a time for other people's charities. So it'd be like a Sunday night charity poker tournament at my place, raise them $162,000, I'm all excited. And then I never hear from them again. And it's not that like, hmm. I don't trust them, but I like to know what happened with the money or I like to see, like, I'm just a very visual person. I like to see cause and effect. And so I decided yeah. I was going to make a very simple, straightforward charity. If I make backpacks with 14 pounds of supplies and I give it to someone, I know it's not going to save their life forever, but they're going to have a bunch of stuff that they actually need and use. There's a sleeping bag, poncho, a watch, books. There's a bunch of things inside separate from the food and drinks, which won't last a long time. The other things will last for them for years. And the backpack itself is really high quality. Oh, that's amazing. So the, the focus of it is just really having that hands-on approach to it to say, look, I want to truly make a difference, even if it's one small little piece. I mean, that's a big difference for that person's life that has the ripple effect. I mean, just think about it. If I look at the small little things that we do each day and how it all adds up, and I think if people could understand that small little difference that you can make each day, you know, the world could truly make a big yeah. difference. One of the questions that... Um, Amandia has is I would really like to know from Dan how he plans to change the world and is he open to ideas? Sure. So my main thing right now I'm practicing. So it's been eight years of practice. You know, I've given out millions and millions of items to the homeless, right? And in that process, I get to see how does the government react? How do businesses react? How do the homeless shelters react? How does shipping like shipping overseas? There's different laws, different rules with uh, the products that are inside of it, what can I remove? Like I've shipped to some countries where they ship it back or hold it at customs because there's too many items or there's too many things that are sold at retail stores. So I, right now it's been practice. Uh, 
I know it sounds weird saying eight years of practice, but when you're talking about trying to save the world, it takes some time. And so I've been able to get out millions yeah. and millions and millions and millions of items to the people. And in that process, I found out what each aspect needs, wants, cares about from every level, from the person receiving the bag. Like I spent five months meeting with homeless people, meeting with military and asking them like, hey, if I dropped you off in the middle of a desert, what would you need? Hey, if you were in the downtown streets of Chicago, what would you need? Hey, if it was really cold, what would you need? What was, if it's really hot, what would you need? And so that's how we curated the things that are inside the backpack. And I made it so that I could ship out same day. So if an emergency happened, most of the time, major, major charities take them seven to 11 days to ship out their uh, emergency supply products. I can ship out same day and next day, depending on the time of the day. So if it's before 2 p.m., I can ship out the same day anywhere in the, in, the, in the world effectively. So I want to do that at scale. Right now, I can only have a couple hundred thousand items at a time sitting at the warehouse because I'm self-funding it. And I don't really raise money from the public for this. People have donated and can donate. That's not really my mission. My mission is for me, I've been self-funding a lot of money into this thing every year to practice, to get everything right so that when I can, I will have tens of millions of items in the warehouse ready to ship. So if an earthquake boom, tornado, boom, anything happens. And so like when the earthquakes happen in Mexico city, uh, the girl that runs my charity, she got on a plane the next day and like we shipped out a whole bunch of backpacks and she was in the rubble, like removing, helping people. So like the practice of execution, when the situation happened in Puerto Rico, we had two jumbo planes. We filled it up with supplies. And I, I mean like full military, huge jumbo planes. We weren't allowed to fly in. We had to like play stupid. So we had to figure out how do we deal with governments when there's no electricity? So we flew in, I had, I hired uh, military guys to fly in. They, they landed and they're like, Hey, you can't land here. What are you doing? Like, how could you not call in? We had to play silly. Like, Oh, well, we didn't know. We thought that you guys didn't have your phones because there was no electricity. So we dropped up all the items, got on our planes and flew right back and left them all the supplies. And so that's all important practice, how to go to Mexico city in an earthquake how to deal with the government that doesn't want you to bring them supplies. They want it to cut. Like, how do you deal with all those situations? And so I'm happy now that I feel like we're, we've got the practice under our belts now and we're really prepared for these next years of being able to do this at massive scale. Nice. How important does it play into the factor of, you know, kind of pre, um, what would you, the market research and all the other stuff behind it before actually launching something? Cause I think that's, one of the hard entrepreneurs deal with, especially the coaches and speakers market, is you want to perfect what they want to share to the world. How much of it do you need to kind of perfect and how much do you need to just get out there so people can know your, your market awareness? Is yeah, so the thing about researching now is you can find out things and fast forward. Because of Google, Yelp, Amazon, social media, you're able to find out what people say, think, and do about your competitors. So anything you're going to do, there's already competition. There, we have 7 billion people in the world, 7 billion humans have tens of thousands of ideas. So there's been trillions of ideas. It's really hard to have a new idea or a new concept, which is okay. You're just going to be reinventing the wheel. Instead, you're I'm sorry. Instead of reinventing the wheel, you're going to perfect the wheel. You're going to find things that you like or don't like about different people and their companies and how you can fix it. And so research is important, but you can research really, really quickly. In a few days, you can really understand everything about an industry. And then you got to practice. So what I did was eight years ago, I was researching everything. I found out what was going on, how to deal with giving out items to the homeless. By the way, there's, there's very strict laws. Like I can't give food to the homeless. Like I can actually get a fine, like a ticket. Weird. In a lot of states, I can get a $150 fine for giving out food to the homeless. That's an actual ticket. Like it, so that part of research is important, but actually doing it over those first five months, I was ordering all the items and then I was going out there on the streets myself with a camera and I would ask the homeless people if I could film them. If not, I would just take notes and I would sit there and say, hey, okay, here's a backpack, go through it and tell me what you like and don't like. And they would sit there and they'd rummage through a bag and say, I don't need this, I wouldn't need this. And I found out that socks were by far the number one most requested item. Socks blew everything out of the water. How would I know that unless I went there and interviewed all these people? I never thought of that. The number two most requested item wasn't even in our backpacks to begin with. It was duct tape. 
duct tape wasn't even on my radar. But every time we spoke with the military guys, we spoke with the women, they just said that the duct tape helped them with all their stuff. It just helped them with their clothing, helped them with packaging things, it helped them sealing things. Duct tape was just useful for them to fix things. And so number two most requested was duct tape, which we didn't know. So just going out there and asking the questions of the people that you're either trying to serve or that you're trying to learn from. Nice. I love that. That's that definitely a great response. One of the questions that came in from Justin Cross, one of our members, is, is what is the biggest new trend? Escape funnels, emails, text. What's next? DMs. D D DMs. DM, DM marketing has gone through the roof these last few months because the open rate is so high. You're able to, it's less like text messaging. The reason you see people text messaging all the time and you're seeing all these large influencers posting their phone number to text them is because text messages have a 98% open rate. Well, DMs have a huge open yes. rate also because most people don't have huge followings. So if you DM them, they're going to see it. And they're going to, if you make the first few words interesting, they're going to open it. And then if you make your paragraph compelling, they're probably going to respond. They're not getting that many DMs unless you're talking about an influencer yeah. or somebody really big with hundreds of thousands of followers. They're getting a ton of DMs, but they're still probably going to see it. But you, you met anybody with oh, yeah. less than 100,000 followers, they're going to see it. So true. I mean, I, I consistently reach out to a lot of the influencers that have hundreds of thousands, even millions of followers. And a lot of them will see it, they respond to it. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely a powerful strategy. What would you suggest in that type of strategy? Because I know some people are thinking, well, do I just send them what I send them in my emails? I mean, do I send them a link? How do you kind of open those conversations? Via yeah, you want to be very direct with what you want from them and what you're offering. And you have to keep it very, very simple and not some big, long speech because nobody wants to read your two page blah, blah, blah. So the first three to five words is going to be the headline. And that's what is most compelling, mm -hmm. like business offer, free product, ship to you, work with you. You want one of those type of combination of three to five words so that they see it saying work with you or ship to you or free product for you or business or paid post, they're gonna open that, right? Because it stands out. Instead of just saying, hey yeah. Manny, well, hey Manny, it's just, you get that message 60 times a day, right? So how many hey Manny's can you open? That's not that exciting because you see it so many times. If I say paid post Manny or work with you Manny, what are you gonna do? You're gonna open it, right? Just to see what mm -hmm. it is. And so within there, Within the body of it, it can be similar to an email, but just shorter. Don't make it some huge yeah. long thing. Nice. All right. I love that. So Annie Evans has a question. She says, what are the top three apps you recommend for entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs that are starting to manage their business? Yeah. So LinkedIn is number one. LinkedIn is far and away become the most useful business social media platform because they added comments, likes, sharing, and they made it easier for you to interact with people in an industry. So if you are you have a sports product and you want to go to retail, you can now search Sports Chalet. And then poof, all the executives that work for Sports Chalet are going to pop up and you can add them. Big Five Sporting Goods, Target, Kmart, Costco. And you literally can find the executives for all these companies and start interacting with them. I'm not saying to just go start cold pitching them because that's not really going to work. But start following them interacting with them, et cetera. Eyeballs wise, what's fascinating is on TikTok because shockingly you can go really viral on TikTok even when you don't have a large following. There's some times where when I first started, I had a few thousand followers, but I would get 200,000, 300,000 views on a video, even with just a few thousand followers. And I wasn't gaming the system or doing any tricks. It's just that TikTok is one of the few platforms that if you make good content, it likes to show it to everybody. So if you get any engagement, it yeah. starts to decide if more people should see it and sometimes you can blow up there but the main platform is facebook i know funny thing i told, uh, I told people a couple of months ago start using TikTok, and then we have some of uh some of the people that can't get any reach on facebook or instagram or anything like that going viral on TikTok. <laughs> they're, they're doing like how-to videos or something and they just make it engaging enough yeah and then facebook facebook's where you can see if people care facebook is where you can spend 20 bucks 50 bucks 30 bucks 100 bucks on ads, figuring out who cares and what age group, what demographic, what cities, and find out who cares about your product. And I call that digging for oil. So you're digging 30 bucks here, San Diego, 
30 bucks here in Los Angeles, 50 bucks, Texas, 50 bucks, Miami. And then boom, Miami, you crush and do 200 bucks in sales. Well, don't worry about San Diego, LA, and Texas. Focus on Miami until the oil runs out. Yes. I try to say this for people in the same sense for where they're focusing on their content in social media. I know you've got some great insights on that. What do you suggest for businesses that need to be on all of these other social media platforms, at least think they do? How do you manage that for some of like entrepreneurs that are kind of sure. So you should make all of your content from one main platform like Instagram and then repurpose that content on the other platforms. You want to have all the social media platforms because Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, they're all free. Every single one of them is free. So at least own them, at least have your name, have your screen name, have your photo, have your bio, just at least put your flag in the ground. It's like social media real estate. Just have your flag in the ground on each of these different platforms, but make your content from one main platform and just repurpose it on the other relevant platforms for you. Nice. See. And I think this makes it a lot simpler versus trying to come up with different right. content campaigns right. for everything. Because then you're just, you don't even have a uniform brand right. at that point. Now it's just everything trying to be different and unique. Um, a few people are asking in the Q&A how to connect with you on the backpacks, how to plug into your charity in their city. What's the best way for them to do that? Is that just at modelcitizenfund.org? Yeah, either or on the website, the modelcitizenfund.org, or on Instagram is at modelcitizenfund, or you can DM me and I'll put you together with Marcella, who runs my charity. Perfect. Now, if you guys are watching right now, we have the text and keyword set up, so that can also get you directly connected. I'll make sure to get that info to you. So if you guys text in the word Dan2020, all one word, uh, it'll get directly to his Instagram to connect. And then also I'll send out the Model Citizen Fund info there as well, so you guys can stay connected. Uh, what has the, been the hardest challenge that you faced in business, and what did you do to resolve it? The hardest this was from Asha. Yeah, the hardest challenge is always just dealing with other people that don't complete what they say they're going to complete and putting all your eggs in that basket. And so I try to make what's called a scope of work. What happens is a lot of times you expect somebody to do something in a certain time or for a certain price and they don't do it and you depended on that. And so by having a scope of work, it removes that miscommunication or that no communication. So if, if I say, Hey Manny, can you make me those two blessed t-shirts, right? Can mm -hmm. you make it for me by next Friday for 20 bucks a shirt? I was clear with what I wanted, right? Next Friday, 20 bucks a shirt. If I didn't say that, I say, hey, Manny, can you get me those two blessed shirts soon? Well, yeah, you, you might give it to me in three or four weeks for $64 a shirt. I don't know. <laughs> like you might just mark it up or it might be that you end up waiting four weeks and then you make it all in one day and have to pay a rush order. There were just no clear communication because I just said, hey, Manny, can you send me those two blessed shirts? And so being yeah. very clear and very deliberate with what you want, when you want it, that will help a lot. I like that. So just really clear, guys, on, on the scope of work of what to deliver. And kind of like how I teach people on what they should be sharing their business about. I call it the art of business, A-R-T. Your audience, the results, and the time frame. You can get very clear on that. It's very easy for people to understand what you do and how you can help them, right? Uh, Lori Bruton asked, uh, what does Dan need help with the most now? What, what's your biggest focus? Um, my big focus, on, I went and started going live every day at 6 p.m. on the 100 Million mm -hmm. Academy. And so this 100 Million Academy thing is a lot of work. Like what, what you see I'm sitting in front of is like a full-fledged studio in my, in my living room because uh, of the quarantine. And so I've been going live every day at 6 p.m. Uh, what I need help with, I just need people to go out and do stuff. Like, it's not necessarily for me. I just want, if people are listening and learning, which I love seeing stuff like this, I want them to actually go implement it, not come here, learn, and then go back to Netflix and then, you know, that's it. Make a bunch of notes and then pack them away somewhere. Just and taking action. action. That's what I need. I don't, I don't need anything for myself personally. I want, I, the more people go do stuff, the more stuff happens. What that means is if these people that are watching now actually go out there and implement it and they're able to all hire two or three employees each, well, what just happened? Hundreds of people got hired and they have two to three, two to three family members. So this one call could all of a sudden help 500 people, right? So to me, it's just the basics of if I can help inspire people to actually go work, hire employees, also spend money in their local community, a lot of stuff happens. I love it. That's, that's the way it's got to be, Dan. Exactly. 
Uh, Robert Wall asks, Stan, who do you look for, uh, look to for your own coaching? Any mentors or anybody that you'd like to mention or talk about that you learned? Yeah, there's a couple of key people on social that you could follow. My best friend is my mentor. He was the founder of Marvel Studios. Um, so he created the Avengers and Iron Man. And we've been best friends for almost 10 years now. But he's not really a big social media guy. The guys you could follow on social media that I think are really interesting are uh, Andy Persella from First Form. A uh, $300 million supplement company, great podcast. He's very rough and tough, so it's very in your face. It like, makes you want to work. Um, Ed Milet is obviously wonderful. He's got he's worth a couple hundred million dollars. He has millions of followers, big podcast, but very spiritual type family man. Uh, my business partner, his name is Joel Marion. Uh, he has one of the biggest email lists in the world with 19 million people on his email list and a $700 million supplement wow. company. Uh, so that's at Joel Marion. I'll put some of these names in here so you can follow them. But these inspirational guys that have actually gone and built big businesses, those are the people I look to that are my friends and mentors. Awesome. I love it. Now, as far as your business goes, you're focused, you know, tell us a little bit more about this million, um, is it 100 million yeah. academy? Tell, tell me more about that. Put this in here. Oh. Uh, yeah, so 100 million academy. It's 100millionacademy.com. And actually, everybody in here, if they want to give them a free month, they can. Uh, let me just do oh. that. Oh, look at there, guys. You're going to get a free month. So, yeah, it's normally it's $100 a month. It's a $100 a month site, but mm -hmm. you guys all get the free month for the first 30 days for free, and then you can cancel anytime. You only have to put in your credit card. All right, so email that. Um, and so. There you go, guys. Free zero at 100. Yeah. Free 30 yeah. academy.com. So essentially Appreciate Academy is I have 22 instructors that have all done over hundred million in revenue or spent over hundred million on ads or been seen by over hundred million people. And so wow. I wanted a, a site that was kind of like an online college that I'm going to do for many, many years. It's kind of like the Netflix for entrepreneurs. We already have like 150 hours of content there and we have a bunch more hours going uploaded every week. And essentially my goal is, I want to build an online school at scale and I'm going live every day at 6 PM, which is cuckoo. Um, we're going live every day at 6 PM and I'm bringing on different instructors to jump on. So I'm going to have Manny Lopez jump on. Then the next day I'll have another character jump on. I'll have these different characters with businesses or that I respect. They will be on every single day at 6 PM. And so it's a lot of work, especially when I'm still trying to run the social media agency. Yeah. Um, but essentially like, I want this 100 million Academy to be like a legacy play where people can learn from big business owners for many years to come. I love it. That's what it's about. You, we've got to create these resources and opportunities and the education that we can provide. And I think that's the biggest thing missing from our educational system is being able to learn from people that have actually gone out there and gotten the results. And I think it's the biggest thing that we can bring to our community these days is really just bringing them that forefront of saying, this is how you actually do it. One of the questions I have is, how do you do all this? I mean, how do you have your, your nonprofit, your charity, the 100 million academy, the 36 companies you invest in, the social media agency, how are you doing all I'm gonna this? tell you a really big secret, ready? Yes. Group, ch group chats. Group chats. The secret weapon is group chats. Okay. Tell so me more. Every company I invest in, I have a group chat with the founder and their main executives. Every one of my social media clients, I have a group chat either on WhatsApp or in text message with the owners of the brand and their head of marketing, plus my executives. With every company that I run, I have different executives placed into it. So I have a group chat for my web, web design team. I have a group chat for the 100 million academy. I have a group chat for the charity. I have a group chat for each of the businesses and I'm literally interacting with group chats. Some people like to use those platforms that are task manager platforms. Those are great for long form. I'm very direct. Boom, boom. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Because what happens in on some of those group management platforms is that a task can get pushed to the side or like, Hey, I didn't see it. Or they might take three or four or five days to respond or look at it because inside of another app within yeah. an app, I know you looked at your text messages, right? So if I text you or WhatsApp you, you can't get around that. And the reason it's a group chat is because then people are on top of you for me. So if it's me, Manny Lopez, Greg Reed, and Ed Milet, and we're all talking, 
and I say, hey, Manny, can you make sure those shirts come in next Friday for 20 bucks each? Manny now is not just Manny to Dan. Greg and Ed are in the same chat, and we're all looking at expecting that thing to happen next Friday. Does that make sense? And so I try to keep everything yeah. very straightforward in these group chats. Man, I like that. So just being very direct in simplifying the process. You know, some people kind of over redundate the uh, the task there. So let's we have a couple more minutes with you. I wanted to ask a couple more questions that are popping in the Q&A here. How do you select a business? This came from Ryan Anderton. How do you select a business or platform and then scale? All right. So say the question again. So how do you select a business or a platform and then scale? So let's take a look at maybe some of the companies you choose to invest in. How do you choose that company? And then how do you decide when it's ready yeah, so to scale? I choose it mostly based on the founder. So I'm betting on the founder in most scenarios because ideas are a dime a dozen. And ideas aren't just a dime a dozen. They're zillions of them. I've heard so many amazing ideas that will never happen because there's nobody to execute them. I've got a whole notes pads in my pocket of like, I have these 60 different companies I wish somebody would do. They just don't happen because I don't have a quarterback. I don't have somebody, I can be the coach. I need a quarterback to run these things. And so the way I'm choosing who I'm investing in is I'm betting on them. And so what happens is I get a couple hundred different pitches every single month, sometimes a couple hundred pitches in a week. And the main way I filter through is by asking them basic questions. Hey, can you send me your business plan? Well, that filters out more than 90% of them because they haven't even made a business plan. Once they send me a business plan, hey, can you send me some financials? Send me your website, your social media, is your bank account and corporation set up? Like it's just basics. I'm not asking them to spend any money or do anything crazy. I just want to know, have you done these steps? So then from that, let's call it 100 people, 10 send me their plan, two or three might actually go through and show me that they actually did their corporation, their website, their bank account, their social media, they did all the basics. So now it sounds like I went and interacted with a hundred people, but in, in actuality, I'm just interacting with the main two, three or four people that actually went through the hoops, right? They jumped through these hoops. Mm. The hoops I asked them to jump through are not hard, right? It's not like I asked them, hey, can you write me a whole thesis of why you did this? I need 40 pages by tomorrow. No, did you make a corporation? Did you make a bank account? Did you get a trademark for this if you needed that? Did you build your social media accounts and make the photos and video? Like, did you do any of the original stuff? That's why I wrote my book. It's literally meant the basics. And I'll give you guys all a free code for this too. The basics of the book is how to set up shop. Like, how do you get started? It's probably back there, yeah? Uh, I do have a bunch of them. I have a couple of them. I keep I keep trying. Whenever I have a chance to get one or a couple of them, whenever I'm at an event and you're giving them out, uh, I try to grab a couple so I can give them out to other people. It's genius content in there. How to set up a business for under a thousand more, So you always have them. Um, and everybody awesome. can get the book for free, free ebook code. There's elevator. See, notice what he's doing, guys. He's not trying to sell you a program. He's giving, 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 just value, value, value. When he's got tons of stuff, he could have you guys buy from him. But understanding the value of building relationships, you know, I'm teaching this all the time. Only 2% of sales happen on the first contact. 80% of your business will be five to 12 contacts in. Just focus on establishing the relationship, qualifying the people into your community. So you can do what Dan does. He only has to talk to a very small percentage of people that have actually done the steps required to get him where he wants to have them, where he can actually give them the best yeah. value. And the same thing goes for you guys. You can't just take on anybody and everybody in every opportunity that comes your way. You gotta have the ability to find the things that are right for you. So this has been definitely some great, great insights. We're going to take a lot of this content down so I can make sure we get it to the team as well. Now, another question we have is uh, from Richard Villasana. He's actually, he owns a nonprofit that is in the foster care system, helping reunite foster families. And given the present situation, how would you recommend raising money today for a charity? Kind of this whole, you know, situation yes, so we're in right now. Charity fundraising is meant to be done online now because normally I would say my answer would be live events. Now because mm -hmm. of Zoom and all these virtual events that can happen, that's a great platform to raise money from and people are more charitable than ever now. The economy will get tougher this yeah. summer. So it's going to be a bit different this summer. But right now for the next month or two, hopefully, obviously we're all praying that this gets done in the, this month. But if it doesn't, it's going to get yeah. a really tough this summer to be raising money except from 
really rich people. Right now, you can still raise money from the masses for your charity, which is much more effective. So using main platforms like GoFundMe, GoFundMe is still one of the best platforms because it's so direct. People are Most people already have an account there. They're comfortable donating there. The main thing is your charity ask has, has to be very, very, very direct. It can't just be, I'm raising money for this organization that helps the coronavirus or COVID-19. Like That's too broad. If you say, I'm helping women's shelters, that money is going to go to them. That's a much more direct, hey, I'm helping orphanages at this time because a lot of children are going to orphanages and that's what I need for COVID-19. I'm going to donate the money to shelters or to orphanages. Being more direct will actually increase your donation value. It'll increase what people care about and think about for you. And it won't feel so general. If you're just too general, it's going to be tough for you to raise money. Yeah. I think the same thing that goes for business as well, right? If we're too general on the results and what we can do for people, it doesn't really gravitate. It doesn't get them to pay attention. Right. So I, I really appreciate every minute you've been on with us today, Dan. Um, I know we have just throughout your time here. So is there any last words you want to leave for our audience? Don't talk about it. Be about it. What that means is you will stand out because most people just talk, 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 and then they don't actually take the actions to do it. Just by taking the basic actions of showing up to these meetings, showing up to learn from Manny Lopez, learn from these people, and then taking action of like, okay, he taught me this, 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 and this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to set up my TikTok today, my LinkedIn today, my Twitter, my Facebook. I'm going to set all these things up. Great. Now I'm going to set up my blog, my website. Boom. It's a checklist of things that if you just get those things out of the way, you've already stood out leaps and bounds past your competitors. Big time. That is this one of the biggest things I think is, is holding a lot of entrepreneurs back is that action taking. We get a lot of information. We get a lot of advice, a lot of strategies, a lot of opportunities, and yet we get stuck on that action taking portion. So uh, we hear it from Dan Fleshman. This guy's got a huge, huge influence. He surrounded himself with the biggest names in business, entertainment, celebrities, you name it. And you hear it from him. You've got to go out there. You've got to take action. You've got to surround yourself and serve your way to success. So I appreciate your time, Dan. Uh, any questions you guys have for Dan, feel free to leave them in the comments. Stay connected with the text Dan2020. He'll receive all of your contact info and we'll get all those gifts to you guys as well. So I appreciate your time, brother. Thank good, you. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Wow, that was amazing. Man. I, I got to hear what were your guys' thoughts on that interview right there, that Q&A. There's so many more questions you wanted to ask him. Uh, maybe we'll bring him back for another one, uh, another interview down the road. But I want to know, what did you think of this talk? Put it in the comments as well. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. It is 1130. We got another 30 minutes right now until the event is over. Well, 27 minutes so we're going to leave it for open networking. I'm not going to do the five minute blocks. Uh, we're just going to go straight into the networking, have some great opportunities. Uh, and then you guys can jump table to table on the little digital platform and have some fun there. And we do have.